All right, everyone, we start off today talking about how anti-war sentiment has nothing to do with leftism. Actually, uh, it's, it's going to be time for a little bit of a history lesson that I've only briefly touched on before, because uh, I, I heard a John Lennon song, you know, Happy Christmas War is Over, and play it every fucking year on repeat on Christmas uh, the other day, and it sort of sparked an idea for a video, so <laughs> now, now enjoy. Uh, but first, uh, I am shadow banned on YouTube, and so if you'd like to share the link to this video out, that's appreciated. Also, there will be four links in the description in a pinned comment and various links in the description to other places to find my work um, to those by the way who shit post about shadow banning not being a thing on YouTube they literally brag about it they've made several blog posts to the effect that they explicitly suppress ind independent creators who deal with news and politics it's explicit it's not implied that being said and I figured, I was at the Yumbo, because I had to get, what was it, cabbage, I think. And I got the last one, so sorry to anyone that went to the Yumbo and <laughs> didn't get the Christmas cabbage. Should have gotten it days before. Uh, uh, and, and they were playing, you know, that Lennon song. I was thinking, you know, Lennon is sort of the stereotypical face of 70s hippiedom, the counterculture, anti-war, and, and so forth, doing the, the Yoko thing, the modern art thing. Uh, kind of cringy, but, you know, some good music. And I was thinking a lot of people have the misconception that anti-war rhetoric or, or reluctance to engage in war other than strictly defensive, especially outright pacifism, is a left-wing sort of thing, that it's somehow it's tied in with left-wing ideologies. Uh, beyond being able to look out in the streets and see who's actually throwing the Molotovs at the moment, um, a lot of people have that misconception, I think, because when you look at like the U.S. or Western countercultural movements, especially in the Vietnam War era, we're talking the mid-60s through the mid-70s. They, they were championed by leftists, but it wasn't because specifically of war. We have to understand that it was more about uh, being countercultural to, to the West, uh, to imperialistic Western power, as they would put it. And of course, communists infiltrated and used these groups. They're still doing that today with leftist movements uh, to try to demoralize the Western world and sap its will to fight. The irony, and, and most people don't realize this, is that actually the young people in the Vietnam era were the most pro-war. Much of the anti-war rhetoric, the people that were on the streets tend to be young, but most of the people that opposed Vietnam, they were older. <laughs> they were, they were the, their generation's boomers. Uh, people from the, the fucking World War I era in some cases. Why? Because they lived in a time when the unit before the atomic era in which the, the mutually assured destruction thing didn't exist, the idea of nations literally being wiped out wasn't really a thing, and, and they were very hesitant. Uh, you no longer have anyone left alive, by the way, from that particular era. Like, I, like, I think the last World War I era people have pretty much all died off. There are a few people out there that are like 110 years old. But that's really the end of the U.S. as, as its previous form. After World War I, it becomes a great power. After World War II, it becomes the bipolar uh, the, the hegemon of the West, and, and the rest of the Western bloc is with it. But if you have a brief history lesson moment here, uh, you'll realize that actually the communists spent just as much time fighting each other in the 60s, 70s, and so forth as well. Uh, in fact, China repeatedly invaded Vietnam. Vietnam fought with, with Pol Pot and Cambodia on both sides at different times. There were Russian and Chinese spheres of influence that were bitterly hostile towards each other and fought proxy wars for, for hegemonic Eastern Bloc power. The Russians basically allowed China to develop nukes and then almost immediately regret it because they stopped being a, a vassal state. The Soviet Union and Chinese especially, with all of these attendant states, Killed, butchered tens of millions of people in repeated invasions over ideological communism. Most people don't realize the death toll from Western proxy wars in that particular era is probably lower. <laughs> of course, you're not going to get proper reporting, and when your military is largely dudes with primitive last century weapons that you can march on a target like a stack of meat because you've got excess manpower and you've got crazy people in charge, eh, if five million people die taking the city, who cares? You took the city, right? It's not like you need that many peasants because you're industrializing. And so war was a natural sort of thing. The anti-war sentiment of today it is largely lost on the left, the liberals. And I know that that's differentiated from the left in the sense that leftists would deem themselves. The U.S. left especially, that the center left, it became pro-war under Obama. They, had, they never had any problem with any of the uh, re-invasions, troop surges, 
blowing up schools and hospitals and shit with drones. They had no problem with the uh, nation-building bullshit that we pulled in Libya. Ousting Gaddafi totally wrecked Libya. Uh, tens of millions of people put out of their homes, essentially. Uh, tribal warfare uh, spiraling across North Africa and the Middle East. The left didn't say much during that period of time. Very, very few leftists were consistently anti-war during the Obama years. A little bit more once Trump comes in, regardless of what happens now. I expect that the anti-war rhetoric will continue to take a back seat. But the problem is that when we look at history, when we look at sort of the, the modernist style anti-war movements, the reason why the loudest voices were leftists was because of the imperialism aspect, not because of the aspect of war. That was just an end to a me uh, means to an end, essentially. That is that what they wanted is the West to stop branching out into countries where it didn't have influence, stop defending them from, from the Soviets and the Chinese, because, I mean, a lot of these people wanted communism, they thought it was good, and they were basically, their brains were, were, they were brainwashed by propaganda. And so they never learned about the Chinese invasions of Vietnam. Their history books never told them about Pol Pot butchering Vietnamese people, the Vietnamese army bousting Pol Pot, the difference between Russian and Chinese doctrinal communism and their interpersonal struggles. You never heard about these things. They were sabot sabotaging each other constantly. What you get instead in propaganda that is from the left at the time, and you still get it now, is you you're supposed to ignore the Holomador. Uh, you're supposed to ignore all of the various wars that China especially engaged in from, from the 60s and 70s explicitly. And you're supposed to ignore the human rights violations and slavery and so forth there and simply focus on the West. So that is that people that are more ideologically anti-war, they tend not to be leftists. The leftist has usually become anti-war not because of war itself being wrong, but because of the ideology behind who's waging the war. If it's a capitalist nation, it's evil. If it's a communist nation, it's a liberation movement. And you see how words are used as well uh, in the propagandistic context is, uh, also. Uh, but yeah, being anti-war, like for instance, I'm certainly not on the left. Yeah, there are moral issues on which I agree with leftists, generally speaking. War is one of them, but it's not because I don't want the West to win. Of course I do. I think that the way to do that is generally not to bomb third world countries and therefore make diplomatic problems for yourself. We've been trying it for half a century, <laughs> look where it's gotten us. All we end up doing is wrecking people's lives, we create weak, miserable states that spawn enemies anyway. It's fucking pointless, and it costs a huge amount of money, a huge amount of manpower, um, and, and, and wastes resources that we don't really have, and, and is ethically and morally, I would say, wrong. I would say mar uh, marching on an enemy country because it's uh, attempting to invade you or it's threatening to nuke you or something is a little bit different from what we've generally engaged in. Most of the struggles we've engaged in were not ethical. They were not, they, there's no point to them. We lost half of those engagements. The difference is that the leftist won't also say, oh yeah, by the way, the Soviets and the Chinese did the same thing. So did Pol Pot. So did the Vietnamese. So did all of these various groups. They repeatedly, if it wasn't a proxy war by guerrilla militants, it was an outright invasion. Many tens of millions of people died as the result of this. But when you say, well, if you talk to most self-proclaimed socialists, they'll say capitalism is a bloody ideology, and they'll talk about like the war deaths of capitalism, which it gets a little bit murky because sometimes you have a coalition that crosses ideological lines. But they never do that for communism. Hell, when I arrive at the 100 million deaths estimate, I'm not even counting all of the times that communists slaughtered one another over bits of land or disagreements over what communism was. I could probably tack 30, 40 million additional onto that if I look at just the 70s through the 1980s, just in East Asia. Uh, <laughs> but you're not going to get a proper death count. It's just it's sort of like COVID. China's really good when it comes to this pandemic. Man, just don't test people. Well, if you're not testing anyone, you're not going to find any cases, right? Well, it's a little bit different. It's propaganda. It's still going on to this day. It's just that it's no longer strictly under the banner of ideologically pure communism. It's under the banner of usually Chinese imperialism. But don't talk about that, because if they, if they invade someone, it's just a liberation struggle. That's about all. Peace out.